Hi everyone. I'm Radhika Singh Hello. and I'm in Delhi. Um, my connection to photography is really rather old, except that it's been a little bit uh, cut off for the last few years. So I started uh, Delhi's first photo agency. It was a, in the beginning, it was a photo library. It was all very manual. It was in 1987. There was no internet, no computer, no, mo no mobile phones. And uh, to get in touch with people, you had to make phone calls. And if they were outside the city you were in, then they were STD calls. And so to collect a lot of people and give information, disseminate information, collect things, it all had to be very manually done. So anyway, the story is that I started uh, Photo Media in 1987, and it ran through till 2000. And at its peak, Photo Media had about uh, 150,000 color transparencies, uh, which we were selling on behalf of photographers to the media. So we had uh, advertising agencies, we had publishing houses, we had magazines, we had newspapers, we had audiovisual makers, um, people were making posters, uh, there were all kinds of anything. It was all kinds of things that phot photographs were being sold for out of a physical office located in Delhi. And there were about 200 photographers at that time. And this went on as a photo library, but then it grew into a photo agency where we were representing photographers, doing exhibitions with their work, uh, working with publishers, as in becoming being a photo editor, trying to commission work with photographers. And in many ways, even determining the market for the pictures, what kind of pictures should go into what kind of advertisements and the copyright issues, rates, prices. Uh, really, there was no reference at that time to what one should be doing. So it was learning on the job, trying to read up magazines. How do you contact photographers you don't know? It was trying to visit different cities in India, which meant you needed to fly or take a train. So basically it was, a, it was like a grassroots organization. And um, obviously you, could, you were limited by the amount of funding, the money you made and how well you could therefore get more or contact more people or connect with different markets and it was almost impossible to connect with anything outside India. So that's how photo media ran. And when the internet came in, basically photo media <coughs> phased out because we were, as I said, physically selling pictures and people, photographers were on the net and uh, people wanted to go directly to pick those pictures up. And uh, photo media did not have the funds uh, to be able to scan so many photographs, put them up. It, that was a whole different job. And uh, so after that, I, I worked as a photo editor for a publishing house called Dorling Industry, which did a lot of photography books. And I learned how to place pictures on pages, how actually how those photographs were printed. In the meantime, I continued with curating exhibitions as they were commissioned or sometimes working on exhibitions with photographers work, uh, yeah. which I felt needed to be shown. And so project wise, I left the publishing house and continued with photography projects. During this time, I worked with a lot of people, of course, but uh, notably for my photo for the exhibitions, I worked with Sunil, uh, who came from London looking for a coordinator cooperative, somebody to work with in India. And I met him in 1988. So just to close this story, I have continued with doing photography projects, but really I have gone into archiving first photographs and then histories of business, family owned businesses, which, so where I try and find photographs, I compile them, I put them into a, into a shape where they can scan them. Then I interview and document those histories and then I write those histories. So I have, uh, I have become, I, I guess you can call it an author, but my prime interest was really to document and archive photographs. And then it's become into telling stories with the pictures and with the text that I collect from the interviews. So that's my history. And 
Sunil and I have known each other since 1988 as colleagues and as friends and um, let's say crime partners in putting together videos and exhibitions, uh, all kinds of things that actually now have become such a commonplace thing, you know, photography exhibitions, digital photography, online exhibitions. Uh, all this was, was stuff that we learned how to do from the ground up, actually. And so there he is, Sunil Gupta. You can talk about yourself. Okay. I just, yeah, that's thanks, Radhika. So, so then, well, quite, I'll just say very briefly that, yeah, I'm a photographer, um, more art photographer these days, meaning I don't really do jobbing photography so much. Uh, I got involved with it very accidentally. I was uh, switched out of an MBA into photography classes and uh, actually went to art school. And then I really, I guess, should have been an art photographer from the word go. But instead, I encountered the town hall. And then I turned my back on the commercial art world, got very politically involved with left politics and working with community organizations that were funded by the state in some way. And the whole process of access to education in art and photography became more primary than the art market. So it's in that way that I got involved with curating and it kind of brought me uh, in touch with Radhika because I once had to curate a show, decided to do a show about India in the 80s and I arrived in Delhi courtesy of the British Council by a lady called Brett Rogers, who's now in fact the director of the Photographer's Gallery in London. And she left me in the hands of a certain Sushma Bell in Delhi at the British Council. And Sushma said, well, uh, there's very little happening <laughs> compared to London, but there's this lady called Radhika Singh and I suggest you go and meet her. And that's how we met. And Radhika and I thought when we were discussing this afternoon uh, program that we would focus on the title actually that uh, uh, has been given to the whole project, which is Encounters. So for both of us, our lives have been a series of encounters. And I think both of us value a personal encounter above many other factors. And those encounters have taken us, have led us from place to place in that slightly ad hoc fashion. I don't think she and I have actually either of us decided we want this career and stuck with it forever, you know. So we've met people and it's led us places. That's what's happened. And that's the kind of story I would be wanted to tell today, I think. So over good. to you, Radhika. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no, I agree, except I just want to add one thing. There are two things I want to say very quickly. First is let's keep an eye on the time because we don't yeah. want to ramble. Since we are friends and we know each other, we will just carry on and it could be boring for everybody. So one thing I'd like to say is that you know, I like to keep this light. I don't want to get like heavy into jargon and technical stuff. So we will, as he said, take on from the word encounter and use it to talk about what Sunil has done. I mean, that's the way I'd like to move it. On the other hand, I also want to say that uh, I know that it's been described in the project as an encounter is a, uh, it, it could be a, a chance coincidental thing. I actually do not believe in, in that at all. I think that we predispose and move towards in directions that we are interested and those directions get us to meet and to encounter people and situations which then move us with choices one way or the other. But I mean, a lot of it uh, in, especially in photography, when you talk about it, I think it is constructed in many ways. It may be subconsciously constructed, but it is constructed. It is not just a chance encounter. So, okay, so Sunil, let's, um, what I really want to do is, I want, we're talking about a body of work, so we're not talking about all your work. So let's keep to the, the body of work that is uh, in this exhibition, um, Mr. Malhotra's party. And I think it's really important to talk about the story of how uh, Mr. What, what does Mr. Malhotra's party mean? And how did you get to this in your life? After all, we go from point to point and we gain and we add and we delete 
And so our choices bring us to where we are. So Mr. Malhotra's party is obviously a movement from something to this. So, yeah. so, so let, me, let me just start this by saying that I think, Sunil, so I'm addressing you, that I think that uh, most of your professional life through all the ideology and all the politics and all the activism is driven hugely by a sense of identification as in who am I, what am I, how do I belong this, belong to this situation or this area or this space, how do, what do I, how do I occupy it and how do I express my comfort or discomfort with this particular space, whatever it is. And I'm talking about a physical space, psychological space, it could be a spiritual space. And just so that uh, I can put everybody on one, just on a trajectory, Sunil has moved physically in his life. He was born in, in Delhi and he moved after 15 years, his family moved to Montreal where he did the last bits of his schooling and then the beginnings of his college education. He was on a path towards business management because that's what good Indian boys did. And then he moved with it. He moved to New York very much in response to a relationship and also to try to get to a, uh, another college where he could perhaps excel in this management studies and chartered accountancy, where actually he dropped, he dropped this and started courses in, in photography and then went on uh, to get very seriously involved with the beginnings of the gay movement and the protests in New York in 1976 uh, with a series that he photographed on Christopher Street, which actually is an iconic series historically uh, for every reason. So just to quickly go, so from New York, he's gone from Delhi to Montreal to New York, then he moved to London to live. And then from London, he moved back after some years to India, where he moved, lived here for seven years, he's gone back to London. So Neil has moved a lot. And in, in his trajectory, he has continually placed himself in a situation to say, do I belong here? Am I an Indian? Am I a migrant? Am I a trespasser? Um, is there such a thing as gay? Do I, am I recognizable as a gay person? What does gay mean? And in this identity, uh, through this identifi identification of himself as a human being in these spaces, I feel, this is my opinion, that Sunil has produced some of the greatest body of his autobiographical work, uh, of which Mr. Malhotra's party is one such, which we will describe later. So what do you think, Sunil? In a, do you think yeah some parts of you can be addressed like this definitely so shall i show a couple of pictures quickly so yeah i put this in pocket so that you can put your beautiful yeah. pictures uh oh the host has to enable this sharing share screen yeah you the share screen the no the host oh, has yeah. to enable it so dinesh are you the host no, he's not. And he's he's muted your, anyway. So Sorry, nobody no, I, from the. Uh, Sunil, can you see the green button down there, which is share, share content? Yeah, and it's disabled. By the host needs to enable us. Uh, the person who, whoever uh, invited us into the Zoom from the waiting room, they need to enable the. I have a feeling. Uh, Everyone has just oh, yeah. arrived uh, with the invite. Okay, right? I think I can. I have an option because as Tulsi left, let me try quickly. Sorry. Is that Rahul? Uh, it's Abu. Uh, so I will make you as host. So I think you can do then. That's a good idea. Yes, it's happened. Thank you. It's happened. Wonderful. So. Uh, Hang on. Uh, I'll just bring it yeah, over here. So, uh, you can see? Oh, I'm no, just but it's thinking. Gone now. 
Oh, we couldn't, but I moved the thing. Okay. Let me get this. I'll start again. Sorry about that. Our family was very much there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was just, this is the screen I meant to share. Anyway, here we are. So that's where I started. As you can see in Delhi, I spent my the first 15 years in Delhi, going to St. Columbus mostly. And as you can see, this is a family. I, we were a nuclear family, unusually for the people, everybody else I knew. And uh, I think we were, uh, well, I'm trying to describe this very briefly. I was starting to sense that uh, I'm not fitting in very well. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I think everybody in this picture looks like they're not really fitting in. It's one of those. <laughs> so suddenly at 15, we arrived in Canada and uh, I had to do a year of high school, which was excruciating because nobody had heard of India. So my entire history up to that point became useless overnight. And it wasn't until I discovered uh, my sexual activity, which had been very discreet and secret in India, suddenly was became more public and had a name and it was called gay and there was a gay liberation movement underway. So I, that was my first encounter, if you like, with an identity and I embraced it uh, very willingly and uh, it kind of stood me in great stead. Uh, and it had an impact on the way my life was organized. Uh, I suddenly you know, had my biological family and then also on the other hand, a much wider non-biological family of uh, various friends and lovers. Are we still in Montreal? This is Montreal. So this is Rudy in the middle, who is the guy I met in Montreal, who I followed to uh, New York and then London. New York and then to London, yeah. Uh, yeah, and behind us is my sister, who, was who we all shared a flat. Uh, She's been very much part of the scene and then we the other guy is, is a gay friend. So I, so this became more my family in a way and my subject. And then, but there were very few Indians around. Then I met uh, one person of Indian origin, Pakrun Laktawala, who was a Bora Muslim via Kenya. And he and I became great friends, but there weren't enough of us to have a movement or have any, you know, so we were just kind of gay students then and got involved in, in our local gay liberation movement for which I began to take pictures. So I followed Rudy to New York. Uh, ah. That encounter with Rudy was very crucial because he moved to New York and then I uh, literally, I just sort of followed him there without thinking too much. So is this not, uh, it's not Christopher Street, right? This is this Christopher, is Christopher Street. Street. Yeah. yeah, so let's just talk a little stop here because yeah. I am going to, I'm, I'm making a connection between Christopher Street, which happened in 1976, 77 yeah. in New York, and Exiles, which happened in, in Delhi in 19, the 80s, and which leads to Mr. Malhotra's party also in Delhi yeah. in 2000. So uh, these three series are, are very interestingly exploring the gay identity of people within the city in which Sunil is living, and yeah. and this, of course, was at a great at a great time when the yeah, I think, gay movement was in full force in New York. Well, let's say it's in a very public way because up until then everything had been behind closed doors. Yeah. So suddenly on the street, there's this big public display. There's hundreds of gay men visibly available on the street. Uh, and there, I whilst I was there, I had yet another very crucial encounter with another Indian called Salim Kidwai, who had come to study in Canada. But we met in New York, actually. Uh, and then he went back to live in India. And I didn't get back to India till the 80s. And I began to come as a student to work on my projects in India. And I, I just was exploring, like, what it, what's it like for gay guys in Delhi, you know, in 1980, 81 kind of thing. and. So he was one of my principal informants, but nobody in Delhi, including him, wanted their picture to be taken. So as a photographer, I was kind of stuck because my subject didn't want to be in a picture. So I 
came up with ideas like this. Uh, and you have more of the exiles of the exile series? Uh, yeah, this kind of led on to the exiles thing. But I went back to London, I was still a student, and I tried to do the street in London, but it was completely different. London also did not have a Christopher Street. London was somewhere in between. It was legal to be gay, but there was a lot of persecution. So people were afraid to be too visible. Uh, I'm just going to make a stop at my graduation. I graduated from the RCA in 83, and I had this very intersectional show around race and gender, but it, I was a bit like 30 years too early. So <laughs> it didn't make a big impact. Basically, it was men and women from both the West and from India, and they kind of cross over. Uh, and it's more about the gender and uh, sort of identity thing. Anyway, what happened in the 80s, though, was very crucial to me because I encountered uh, blackness, black arts, race in a very big way. I became black, and black was all of these categories. Everybody who'd been a former subject of the British Empire. And so suddenly I began to look around and think, well, this gay world I'm in is terribly white. You know, so where are the other people? And where are the Indians? And there were no pictures of any, no sign of any gay Indians. So this is how exiles came about. That's an image yeah. from exiles. So 86, 87, I was able to come back with Can't hear you, Sunil. Sunil, go on on mute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I just want to add something here that yeah. this series exiles where you are not where nobody's looking at the camera. These yeah. are still people who Sunil has has got together to construct these photographs, and the backgrounds are all again not natural scenes on the street. These are all historical monuments. So the whole thing is like a set because we are talking about an identity that is still hidden. In fact, Sunil in one of the interviews says, in the gay, in the 80s, being gay was unmentionable and invisible. So this is how, so yeah. it's a constructed series and this exiles uh, is, is, is uh, completely, it's very different from Malhotra's party, but it's talking about the same thing. It is, and it's a radical shift away from documentary photography because I found it to be inadequate to deal with this situation where the subject didn't want to be photographed. So uh, I tried to reconstruct a documentary scene where the subjects are actually gay Indian men and the environment, the background is also a real environment where the people actually meet. And, uh, but we all went there together for the, to make the picture. So there was sort of a cast I met some people and I persuaded some people to reenact these scenes. And uh, that's how it came about. It's constructed uh, so it's, encounters. Uh, yeah, kind of. Uh, but this is exactly where, where the gays, where people were being able to meet. It was in parks. Yeah. It was hidden from view. Because of the, absolutely, because there was, you know how India lacks privacy. Everybody lived at home and everything happened in semi-public. So, uh, and in, in Delhi is sort of delightfully endowed with parks and monuments. And so they became very available cruising sites of couples of all varieties, as we know. So of course, gay men were very much there. So then I met you, like this was 70, this was 86, 87 and 88, I met you. And we made this project, An Economy of yeah. Science. Uh, that's a picture by Ram Rahman. There were eight people. That's an installation shot of Ram's work in the actual exhibition. And this is something we may not do now without thinking twice. But we, I think I was so busy, or we were busy trying to place Indian photography in the center of London, in a gallery in London, and to say it was Indian and then we painted it in the national colors. I know. <laughs> and yeah. so now that might be, that might look a little naive today. I think uh, oh, no, it also it might even uh, gain disfavor amongst the ruling elite. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, then I'm going to kind of jump a decade, and then you invited me to India. So Radhika, you said I've been coming to curate and research 
I need to show my pictures. This is now in the 90s, early 90s. And you organized this show in the Habitat Visual Arts Gallery. And okay, here's so a picture of it in context. installing context. it. Yeah. The thing is, again, we've reached a point where it is possible to show uh, pictures, real, uh, photography from a, a person who is openly and completely, uh, he is what he is, his identity is as a gay Indian man. And in fact, a gay Indian man who is HIV positive. Now, the interesting thing is that the exhibition uh, invited him to this exhibition, which was allowed to be done at the India Habitat Center, where the funding for the exhibition came about because of the HIV positive, because he was HIV positive, uh, not uh, that brought in the money because it was a health issue and because uh, HIV was being funded hugely by the Bill Gates Foundation and a lot of NGOs had, had got money for this particular issue. And so it passed through actually, it's like the eye of a needle that we had gender and sexuality and HIV. These were the three issues around which the exhibition was centered. It was, I would say up to that point, it was possibly the most uh, autobiographical work uh, altogether that Sunil had put together four series. I think there were three series, four That's series. Right. Four, there were four. But yeah. we had the exiles plus the HIV work. That's true. Yeah, from here to was, Yeah. And trespass uh, and homelands. And trespass and was homelands. very openly gay. Yeah. Two men in That's a kitchen, true. over the kitchen yeah. sink and all. But we went through. Yeah. And it was possibly the first ever uh, public show of of this community and what it means to be gay. And we managed to get together a film festival. We managed to get together interviews and people talking. And it, it was, I would say that it was one of the most touching exhibitions I have I witnessed up to that point where people came up to talk to Sunil and to other people who were friends of his, who were obviously also gay, and to work out how they could, how could they somehow emulate his life and be a, and be normal within their identities, you know. And of course, after that, Sunil came and, and lived in India for seven years. Yeah, but that was, see, now that's another encounter. And the encounter is, there he is in the middle of the picture. I know. So thanks to you and the show, I met yet another person. Love interest, and, romantic uh, interest. Fell very much in love. Uh, and came following him to Ladakh. Remember that Ladakh affair? When I was I sitting in your house waiting for a phone call. <laughs> anyway, it, it triggered another series of pictures, which we won't go into, but uh, no. there we are in Lai. And then, but then I decided to move anyway. I came, even though by then he had lost interest, but I came, but I had you. So, uh, and you were incredibly helpful. I could stay with you. And then we found this flat for me in GK2. And there we are in this flat. Like and a couple, started... this is like a couple. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no... I had no clue how to do anything in Delhi, you know, because I I never lived there as an adult. I didn't know how to get a flat. I didn't know how to buy a fridge. I didn't know how to buy cutlery or anything. I was a complete novice at it. I know, but so, you moved really well through India because while before you left, you were a married man. That's true. So we actually fulfilled this kitchen image with the proper <laughs> partner. I hope you have one with Charan there. I do. So... Uh, so then you and I did various things, one of which was to start this magazine uh, to discuss photography, uh, which I think is great about India. It's something you cannot do in the West very easily. You need a lot of money and backers, but you and I did it just over a cup of tea. We thought, let's do it, and we did it. Uh, and then we were joined by Gauri. There's Gauri, and you organized this show also uh, with Gauri and me uh, called Gil and Gupta, which I always liked that title. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's and then true. there we are, you were installing the show. I think installing photography shows was something we both enjoyed doing. That was the Apparently. best part of it, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Putting them up. Yeah, yeah. And then we then we you and I went off on a big research to find contemporary Indian photographers. And we persuaded Goshni Vadera to show it in her gallery in Okla. And then we had this grand opening where there they all are. This was a miraculous so collection of photographers who did not want to be with each other necessarily, but they were all there. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, photography is. So that was click. That was. Um, and then yeah, I also click. got busy with a little bit. I got involved with some teaching. That's NID, where they started an MA course. Uh, Sunil, we have and, to go back to Mr. Malhotra's part. Okay. So we're here, we coming to. Uh, so I met a group of people called Liga. So my activism started, and the picture started with them. They became my actors or my models. Yeah. And so we hung out together, and then every now and then I take a picture of one of them. So these were all known people. Party. They wanted to be photographed. Uh, yeah. uh, many of them decided where they wanted to be located, and they were looking straight into the camera. And the, and the name, the title of the exhibition, I would really like you to explain, Sunil. Why is it called Mr. Malhotra's Party? Oh, because uh, we used to all go to a, a gay, well, Delhi didn't really have gay bars and nightclubs at that point. So uh, there were private parties and then there were privately organized parties in, in some pubs and things. And there was one that took place uh, that was advertised every week as a private party and then it had a name. It was always somebody's party. And one night I went and it said, Mr. Malhotra's party. Yeah. And it made me laugh. I thought it was such a ubiquitous Punjabi, you know, like uh, hardworking, you know, yeah. like I didn't, something you wouldn't associate with the wild, drunken, gay party at all. So uh, I, I did that as my title. So I kind of saw these people as inhabitants of the party who might have been there at the party. One of the things that was also different about Malhotra's party compared to Exiles was, aside from giving their name and showing faces, was that now women were very much in the picture. The women yeah. had also decided to come out and join them. This is Anoki. Yeah. And there's Bikram. And so again, these are semi-constructed portraits because it's, it's like taking the studio portrait but moving it into the street. So I had no control on the background because that's the street. Those people just arrived. So, so you know, this is on 120 negative film. So I would take 12 shots, let's say. Every shot is completely different what's happening in the background. So that was a fun thing. Uh, and so they carry on like this. There's about nearly 50 of them now. Uh, this is Akshara who was, uh, I remember celebrating her 20th birthday party. One of the joys of Delhi was that everybody was so young and willing to include you. So yeah. I had a kind of, I relived my radical youth once again in Delhi. And so I had workshops in my flat, that flat that we found in GK2. It became a kind of Adda and we did all kinds of stuff, both queer and photographic. This is actually my queer group, but I'm having a photographic class. I ran photo classes for them. And you can we see on the walls already. The word. We should talk about the transformation of the word gay to queer. And then queer happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Somehow uh, India never had gay liberation, but it, it missed all that, a bit like computers. And then, uh, but it was just in time for mobile phones and queer. So everybody's saying queer suddenly. Uh, and in the yeah. media, they're saying queer. Uh, queer was a different. When you're, you know, yeah, so this is something defined separately from. So, so it's this not is from the. It's queer. It's heterosexual. Ah, look, queer. See this, and this headline from the Delhi papers. Papers are starting to say queer, you know. So the media picked it up very quickly. Although it's actually it's an academic term. It came out of Yale University, and it's spread around the world. Uh, uh, we had the first Pride in 2008, and there we are. You were there too. We were right at the front, weren't we? So we were. Doing, uh, I did that show with Vadera that was very openly queer. Uh, you and I did uh, the big curatorial exercise where three dreams cross. Yeah. And then the thing that uh, sadly, you know, without thinking, we put up the show Sun City and it created a big fuss. And yeah. in fact, uh, led to uh, kind of uh, precipitated a set of consequences, one of which was that I felt I needed to come back and live in London. Uh, yeah, well, you know, India but, has moved further in this direction, you wouldn't be, we wouldn't have been able to have 
your uh, yeah. photographic exhibition pictures from here that was in 2004 would not have been able to be done today and then uh, but fortunately i by now i've I had another encounter uh, i'd i'd met yet another person uh, who i uh, took with me to Toronto, where we got married. That's us getting married. Uh, two Delhi boys, how about that? In All the way in Toronto, because that's the only place where we could do it. And then we came back to Delhi, and then we came to live in London, because then we could, London became a place we could feel safe and still carry on our work. And I'm going to end the slides with this image of uh, Mr. Malhotra's party as it is hanging today in my retrospective at the photographer's gallery. And unfortunately it's shut right now because of, because of COVID they've had to, there's another lockdown in London, but it'll reopen in December. They're That's big good. prints. Yeah, they're, yeah. Uh, the they're 42 by 42. Sorry? They're 42 inches by 42 okay. inches. Oh, okay. okay, okay. And okay, these so prints, by the way, these prints have all been, my prints were all made by our friend, you know, uh, we were just, just talking about him. Uh, Ooh, Ranbir. Ranbir Singh. So all of yeah. those four pictures were made by Ranbir. Okay. I should send it to him, actually. Was, yeah, was I was sent. worried about him, <laughs> what was happening to him during this COVID time. Yeah. So I'm going yeah. to stop sharing so we can return to... Uh... Okay, so let me say, oh, that Tulsi is back. How oh, nice to see you. So I'm saying we've... Yeah, We've run through, actually run through what we needed to say uh, to get us to the point of the photographs which are exhibited in the ETP exhibition at the moment. So I think it would be, uh, it would be good to leave it, to open it up if, if people would like to ask some questions or clarify something. And uh, I don't know whether the pictures, uh, I suppose everybody must have seen the exhibition, the digital exhibition. Um, but is there anybody who would like to ask some questions or maybe Tulsi, you would like to say something. Did you come in to hear anything? Did you manage to hear some part of this? Just a few minutes. Um, I was also like uh, trying to share live because that's where our uh, majority of audience uh, join. Uh, but unfortunately some uh, sort of Zoom crash, I think. Um, uh, oh. Neither my oh. phone or um, system, none, we could not uh, come in any of the systems. And actually, I think Ms. Radhika was kind of professing. We were talking like, you know, this could happen. And then we were just cut off midway. Really sorry for that. <laughs> yes, um, I know. I know. I was, you have to be careful of me. I have a black tongue. I, and I had given a very uh, long uh, speech, I mean, not long, actually, very interesting speech because I, I was very keen for this particular session. Um, we were preparing it for a long time and um, kind of, uh, yeah, now it is, uh, I missed the conversation also, but I'll go back to the recording. Uh, but um, quickly, thank you for uh, joining. Uh, it is a, uh, it is like, um, we did uh, we did have one session called India Queer with um, Mr. Shivaji Panikar before uh, this session, because uh, he was also uh, talking about um, mentioning and like, you know, touching upon other photographers work, other artists work, as well as Mrs. Surin Gupta's work. Um, uh, on the whole, like uh, we were just building up for this session. Uh, I hope like we have some uh, some of our friends here who will come up with some questions, and then we can uh, go on. Dinesh has a question. Uh, no, I do. So uh, should I, or uh, does Tulsi want to ask? Ha, why don't you just kick it off then? Uh, you know, this journey, which uh, actually in, in the short you and Radhika have talked about, and I do know for a fact that there's a hell of a lot more to it than that. Uh, what is the relevance of activism in today's world? The world seems to be quite changed. And like Radhika just mentioned five minutes ago, that the show which uh, you had earlier probably won't uh, be possible to do so in uh, today's Delhi. Uh, so in a situation like this, what do you feel is your role, the role of your photography, of your activism, and where would it go from here? Sorry, very large question, but... 
uh, well, for me, it's, uh, uh, I feel very torn about it. I feel bad that I left in a way that in fact, one needs to stay uh, to uh, respond to these uh, events that are happening uh, there, you know, uh, rather than kind of uh, just get away. But honestly, I didn't have the means and the resources to, to take on uh, what could have been a very costly and draining uh, court case. Uh, so I sort of stepped away from it. Uh, uh, and also I felt very vulnerable because uh, I'm technically a, uh, OCI, uh, overseas citizen of India, which means that they can put me on a plane anytime they wanted to. So I didn't really want to uh, have that happen and returning would have been very difficult. So now I've gone, I'm having to go back to the way I was earlier, which was to live elsewhere, meaning London, and then come and go. So I've been coming and going, and I've, of course, met some of you in my comings and goings. The last time was for that conference at the IIC uh, that Basant Nayak had organized. Uh, and I should have been there now. So I was opening a show in September of Christopher Street uh, with Roshni Vadera. Thought the, the prince would have been there. Uh, right this week, but COVID has got in the way. Uh, yes, I feel a bit uh, like India is my subject and I've been cut off from it and I'm a little aggravated about that and a bit frustrated. So in the since 2012, uh, where I've been back here, I've been struggling to, in a sense, reconnect with here. Uh, it's maybe I'm older, I'm just finding it more difficult. Uh, uh, Re-entry into India was seem, was very painless. I think thanks to a few people like Radhika and Salim for me. But re-entry into London has been really hard. Uh, I'm a lot older. I'm in my mid 60s by then, you know. So it's a different ball game. There's a new generation. The photography has changed. But you know what, Dinesh, with this show, a bit like the show, it, Habitat had this amazing response, and it also what helped me decide it may be a good thing to be there in person. This retrospective is having a quite an amazing response here. And people are asking me to do things that I would never have thought people I had no access to those kind of uh, opportunities, let's say, both to make further artworks, but also in the larger commercial world. Uh, so, you know, I, you, you probably, you may know that, I mean, I did some, uh, uh, fashion brand, fashion shoot this year in New York, which was, for me, it was like a completely extraordinary, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> so, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I never worked like that, you know, with a, with a crew of 40 people and models mm -hmm. and and yeah, all of that. It's, and, a, it's a modern, yeah. uh, modern day constructed uh, artwork of Christopher Street. It's like yeah. a, it's a I know, the story. The soul is from there, really. Yeah. I what made that work so fascinating. Yeah. So I'm finding that work that as it's coming out into the public realm uh, is generating opportunities uh, that I was, I didn't know how, how to get, find them otherwise. So there'll be more coming because of this retrospective. There's actually, there's more work more like that come in. Uh, so that's helping me settle ask, down. Yeah. Huh. May I ask a follow up question, uh, Tulasi, Radhika? Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, so while you were here and you did a couple of shows uh, with your work and your kind of work, uh, but maybe I am not aware of it, but I don't think there's been uh, gay activism related work which has been done thereafter. Uh, both in terms of hearing of people who are doing that as a personal project and certainly not uh, work which has come out in the public uh, space, whether it's in galleries or whether it's a book. Uh, so what do you think 
should happen with that? I mean, in effect, what you had started off and what you made happen in the last three, four, five years has kind of disappeared, if not gone underground. Uh, what would you say think, about that? I think part of... Uh, uh, oh, yes. Uh, Charan is saying in the chat that Kochi happened. That's true. The two of us had our work at, at right. the last Kochi Biennial. But... Uh, no, so I just going back to what you're saying, I, I feel like uh, as an organizer, and that's what I share with Radhika, I was curating, organizing, researching that you need people like that to create an opportunity and a context uh, for the work to emerge, because you know how it is for, for practitioners, because especially photographers, because they're so individual and so like on work on their own, you know, they're not really groupy. And so, uh, so for example, through Nigar, we used to have a queer festival every year in Delhi. And uh, because of me, I pushed to have a, especially a photo exhibition every year with the festival, which took place at Max Muller. And I think because we had a photo f festival, people would send in work. People would then make work to be shown. You know, it, you, it created an opportunity that people began to know about. And we did a kind of inclusive curation. So we weren't selecting the best we were selecting to somehow represent all of the entries. Yeah. And I just held the power to kind of make the picture small or big and which picture to push next to which picture. I could kind of organize the layout and to try and make it all come together. But in those few years, we had a lot of photography entries and we also had video entries, which some of which I don't think would have been made if we hadn't presented people with an opportunity. Yeah. Now, those prints were made by Ranbir, of course. He has all of the digital files in a weird way. He's got an archive of 500 queer images on his hard drive somewhere. And somebody, in, and in Delhi, we've, we've stored the prints. So we have an archive. So for archive's sake, it's there. It's just that the group, uh, various members, they were all acad young academics, and they went off to do PhDs here, there, and everywhere, you know, in uh, the States. And so it's kind of like, uh, we tried to hand it over to a different lot of people, but it didn't quite happen. Uh, so that's a pr that's an, a problem with the voluntary sector. It can come along, and you know, well, you know, Dinesh, you know, you you start something, and then it can't be you who continues doing it forever. You need it to be taken on board by some other people. You know, that's how festivals and things kind of get a life. Uh, and I. Uh, so really, so funding for these things needs to be secured. So I think uh, that's become a big issue too. We need somebody to step forward and create these opportunities. So uh, you know, people like Vasant who are happy to try and make things happen in India, photographically speaking, or or Rahab and the other people. And uh, I don't know what happened to the Delhi Photo Festival. Dinesh, are you still involved? I'm still involved, but it's just gone into deep slumber because of the reason which you're giving, which is that, uh, you know, it, it's something which you need to hand off over to someone else or another group of people. And funding, of course, is a big issue. But just coming back to what uh, ETPs managed to do, uh, I'd like to understand what you feel about that. Uh, you know, since uh, funds is a big problem uh, in terms of making prints and, you know, physical space and having a show there, and of of course, traditionally, photography is best seen as prints uh, in a large gallery space, etc. But what uh, Tulsi and Abul have done with the EDP is to put together what is actually a very major show, uh, and it's online. Uh, I'm sure it's cost them both in terms of time and you know effort. Uh, the money might have been a bit less than if it was physical, uh, but it's it's through that they've been able to you know make this virtually an international show. Uh, which is not just restricted to a Delhi audience or a Bombay audience. So is that, you think, a good way to go forward? Uh, well, I think online is, is great uh, for access for people who can't physically be somewhere. Uh, but I think you're, personally, I feel it's a very material medium. I'm a, uh, I've, my background is art school. It's the materiality of it. For me, the print is uh, 
is what I'm focused on more than the camera. Uh, the, I don't care what camera shot it, but it's the print that one's interested in. Uh, and that's the thing that excites me. So, I mean, it's nice to see the work. Uh, screens do have this way of making everything look a little bit similar. Yeah. You know, so, uh, so you have little prints or big prints. Uh, and yeah, just the, the feel of it. Huh? Okay, Radhika. No, I actually don't know EPP at all, Tulisi. I think if you were there in the beginning, you would have, uh, you would have definitely introduced it. So, um, of course, I know Abul because I worked with him in an exhibition. But would you uh, just quickly uh, put me put EPP into context? Yes. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Quickly, I mean, I had prepared like, you know, quite a bit of, uh, because to contextualize ETP, ETP is an organization which is dedicated for photography, but we also have a, another uh, basic uh, focus, which is the, uh, we, we would like to create, preserve and share visuals of ancient Tamaragam, like you know, this region, the peninsular Indian region, uh, yeah. which is like the 2000 year old history, which connected this part of India with the Afro-Arabian, Mediterranean, European cultures and lifestyles. So uh, basically, we are looking at uh, creating visuals of uh, the silk, spice, and incense roads that connected uh, the southern part of India with the rest of the world. So the, 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 the intent uh, for Eklokam Trust for Photography is to preserve the contemporary photography through archiving, through collectively creating visuals, and um, also establishing uh, online um, like digital uh, archives. Well, basically. Uh, ETP is not an event-based organization. Uh, ETP is more interested into uh, our identity is a collective creative force. I mean, we always say like, you know, we are a, uh, we are a network of photographers. Like, you know, we, we are not, uh, Abul is the one of the founders of ETP, but ETP doesn't have a, a regular, like, you know, everyday photographers with us, but we have photographers from around the world who join us in various projects and uh, be part of our different public art initiatives. So basically, for example, um, Sri Dinesh Khanna is part of, uh, like, you know, he has been part of our various projects and we have many uh, such uh, prominent photographers as well as young photographers part of a global trust photography. And the other uh, in, uh, part of ETP is like we are based uh, not in an urban sector. We are based in, uh, like right now in Vyanard. Vyanard uh, is, uh, uh, is a very beautiful area in Kerala. Uh, it is well connected to the rest of South India. But basically, uh, it is still very remote. It is not like, you know, being in a Bangalore or being in Chennai or being in Delhi. So all of our initiatives, like, you know, uh, the challenges that you face um, in an urban center, the challenges becomes like, you know, 10 times more here. Basically, opportunities and exposure and those kind of things are much more lesser than um, what we get in an urban setting. And being an organization that is mostly interested in creating and preserving photography, ETP has not come forward as an event uh, organization. Whatever we have done so far, basically it would be like, you know, maybe having an uh, exhibition in a non-conventional uh, setting, probably in a cinema or probably in a house, in a village, uh, because our interest is also to reach out to the rural audience. Plus, um, the, uh, uh, when, when this uh, pandemic came, you know, it uh, kind of pushed everyone to come out of their own limitations and ETP was no exception. And that's how we came for this Images of Encounter exhibition. We are like, you know, kind of isolated and uh, what we do. Uh, there is a choice in front of us. I mean, I repeat this almost in all, our in all my introductions, but, you know, uh, as a tiny organization, as a, in one remote uh, part of the world, what we do, either we keep quiet or we step up and connect with the fraternity. And that's how Images of Encounter exhibition was born. And I, ha I have to say it here because one of the first batches of mail was uh, sent to Mr. Uh, in, in the first batch, Mr. Sunil Gupta was there. And like, you know, it took just exactly two minutes for him to respond and saying, I'm in. And we were like, you know, first when we sent the mail, we were like worried whether uh, should we do it, whether anyone will come because photography is essentially a print. And you know it has a signature, uh, and like you know what is going to be online, whether it, anyway. So that I am in was like kind of something which we were. It was very inspiring, and like you know, no looking back. And I, I was talking to Dinesh the the other day. Um, images of encounter. We do want to have a print exhibition uh, eventually. Uh, we understand uh, the costing. <laughs> thing is, can there. I say something? Yeah. 
just I just wanted to make a yes, footnote yes. here because the reason I said yes very quickly is because it it came from Abu and I know Abu for another encounter. It's an encounter that Radhika <laughs> Dinesh and I shared. It was called what was it called uh, with the architecture divine, divine for facade. Divine facade. Yeah. Right. So whenever if Abu says anything, I always say yes. So. Because, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, Abul has written one autobiographical body of work that was published in a popular magazine called uh, The Shabimani. In that, he has mentioned uh, both Radhika. That time, I didn't know who that Radhika was. He said, like, you know, there was a few pieces, few lines he had written about that. Plus, Mr. Sunil Gupta, we have heard a lot, and uh, the, the, especially this divine facade show, because um, I'm also researching on Abul's photographs, so I've been like you know looking through the archives and collections. And this particular show is something which is everyone mentions. Like you know, there is some write-up in some corner, uh, like people who have seen the show. So it was like um, very interesting. But to read the that autobiographical document and to hear the different names, like you know, I think Radhika was the one who first called and uh, spoke to Abul about this. Uh, I, the the French, uh, the Charles Wallace Scholarship, something like that. She was the one uh, uh, who was uh, talking, coordinating with Abul on that. So it was like, um, good to see you in person, finally. Um, so that's how Images of Encounter was born. And um, one other interest for ETP is like, you know, if you look at Indian photography, uh, like, you know, that is again urban centered. Uh, in Indian photography, not many regional photographers or like, you know, photographers uh, from deep south, are, they don't get much uh, represented. So the ETP as an organization, even in images of encounter, we have some new faces along with the prominent faces. So it is also this online portal has given a platform where uh, there is a space for regional photographers also to uh, come up and present their works. So that way, um, yeah, it is a very great um, Great. Uh, I mean, we are proud and we, we are really blessed and honored that we were able to make it happen as a tiny organization. We are very grateful for all the people who are part of it. So, well, let me tell you that photo media, when it started, there was only a handful of what you call so called prominent photographers. And everybody else who joined in were from everywhere. And the smaller village towns, I'm not villages, of course, but in towns and cities. Because, you know, there was a time when there was no such thing as everybody's a prominent photographer. It's just a matter of how many people get access to a public platform. And the more such platforms you make where people are able to have access, the more people will be exposed and other people will be exposed to them. So it's a very good job. It's a very good thing you're doing. And I'm, uh, uh, I would be in any way that I could be of some help. I would be happy to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I have one question, like, you know, I have uh, read about the camera work that, um, I mean, I think you also, I just joined when you were briefly mentioning about that in the presentation uh, that uh, you, Gauri Gill and um, Ms. Radhika were uh, doing that. So I think it stopped from 2011. What were the reasons? And like, you know, do you think there is a future for, I mean, I feel criticism or um, uh, uprising photography discussions is very less in India. And uh, I haven't read any issues, but from your mission, which talk, which says that you are going to talk about the notion of independent photography, it says everything. Like, you know, I can kind of imagine what uh, what sort of content would have come in that uh, issues. So I'm, uh, I'm just curious, like, you know, one is I would like to read them back when I uh, get more time. But at the same time, I would like to know why it stopped. And do you think there's no scope for uh, such, um, no, no, no. such uh, portals in stopped. India or... It stopped because at that time, it was really difficult to find further funding because actually we were working on a shoestring budget. There were different people, different organizations who had pulled in to help to finance this little project. And it was really being done. Uh, it wasn't, it was, it was not, it was not even fully funded. Actually, a lot of stuff went out of pocket and we ran out and we were, we had a very good support with the French cultural center at that time. And that person who was in charge of it, she moved. So these are the kinds of things, but there is a huge need for such a thing. There is a huge need. And the thing is that it has to be a collection of people who are unbiased in their choice of articles and people to contribute, you know, and, but it has to be critical thinking. Critical thinking 
uh, is a very necessary thing for the evolution of any medium or any society, you know. So, I mean, it, if, if, you, uh, if you think that, you know, you could, uh, could put it together, if ETP in some ways could do that, it would be a wonderful contribution to photography. But it is like that, that, you know, there's nobody else to carry it on and there's no funding. And you get tired, you know, of, uh, of being the only one pushing something. No, uh, it sounds very familiar because um, ETP also has a magazine. Um, I don't know whether you may not have seen that. It is called photomail.org. It's an online magazine. And we were uh, very much working between 2016 and 18. But now we are a bit slow. But the last uh, few weeks, we are revamping uh, the online magazine. Uh, yes, without funding, it is very hard, and without readership, the other other thing is like you know that we don't know uh, how many how many of them are like you no know, serious readers. We now everyone calls themselves photographers, but how many of them are like you know going into the philosophy or theory or the uh, the form and kind of so many aspects of that uh, photography and its expression. So uh, yes, uh, it is a hard thing. Um, I mean. Uh, because ETP is a small team managed, uh, Abul is the editor in chief of Photomail also. Um, ETP is a small team with us. Um, so, our, uh, uh, we also don't have any funding or resources, and it, it's really hard job for us. But we are sustaining basically because we are, we are a small team and of volunteers who are able to dedicate in spite of the limitations, like, you know. Uh, yeah. in, in, with the very limited resources and like, you know, um, all, all the team members are volunteers as far as ETP is concerned. So we are yeah. still managing, we are still running, um, but it is hard. Yeah. We don't know how long we can su sustain that. Mostly okay, so we can open, yeah. Sorry, I was just saying mostly such organizations and movements are run by volunteers and the funding that we talk about comes in, if at all, to help in the actual doing of something where you spend money. In our time, we printed it. See, we had a, it was print, it was hard copies. It was not online, you know? So yes. that yeah. needed money for everyone. And then you distribute it. It doesn't go on the net. You have to physically distribute it, you know, send it to somebody who's taking a flight to go down to Chennai, you know, so that he can then give it to somebody who can distribute it in Chennai. It is so, but I mean, that's the only one start, I mean. Um, Dinesh would I know. I just he, sent some. He's done. Yeah. A, he's also been part of. I mean, you know, organizations that have. Well, while, this, while this conversation is going on, I'm just thinking that you know, each one of us has been uh, uh, affected by the paucity of funds and funds. Uh, you know, either come from the government, comes from the corporate sector, or comes from practitioners. Uh, the government is not interested, the corporate sector here is stricken, and the practitioners currently don't see things as being very bright. But so, really, it's just one person, Rinesh. It could be just one person who gets motivated, and for a while, everything happens. You manage to find the funds. Well, you manage to well right now, if you see, there, there is a... Uh, there's Tul Tulsi and Abul. I mean, they, they, they are uh, motivated, and they're doing it. That's right. We are here on this platform because that's, there's why exactly. that's absolutely. exactly that's and, exactly and, and, and the reason why I asked Sunil that question about you know print versus being online, if currently you know the, and, and, and I have two aspects to that ready, is that currently if funds are not available, then either you go into high hibernation and so there's no work being shown, or use the internet, which is well comparatively freer, uh, both in terms of availability and finances. Uh, which is what Tulsi and uh, Abul are doing at the moment. Yeah. And also the threat of that is, is quite incredible. So, you know, I'd rather look at the positive side of it and move on with it. The other, which I have for the last five or seven years realized, is that for Sunil and me and Radhika and probably Tulsi, you know, the thing of the materiality of the print is paramount. Uh, I am extremely surprised how little that paramountness seems to be so in the present generation uh, because they their entire interaction with photography is on screen <coughs> yes uh, uh, and, and, so, and, and I, I'm, I'm deliberately saying this it's it's a controversial point uh, but in India I'm telling you it is something which is the reality people who've come into photography <coughs> The digital medium and as a screen medium, whether it's on a camera screen or whether it's on a computer screen, 
uh, are totally unfamiliar with the print. Don't even think of that as as a possibility. Yeah. But uh, you know what, Dinesh? What I also don't see, on the other hand, is that there's a there's a huge interest uh, amongst young students, anyway, and young practitioners in analog, and they all want going back to film cameras. And also, there's a huge interest in photo books as a physical medium. And now there's a whole world of photo books. In the West, when you go to photography fairs, there's usually a whole other secondary, but almost semi-independent photo book fair. And I've gotten involved with making some. So two have just come out and they're very different and it's hard to see digitally. So one is a black and white, very silvery book. It's even got silver on the edges and it's very classic. It's black and white. It's, a, it's the same size as 10 by eight prints. Uh, it's very glossy and shiny, and it's just pictures. And uh, people really like objects like this. You know, it's a physical okay, thing. I, I, and on the other hand, so that. I I hundred percent agree with that, uh, and I do I do know that this is uh, there is a segment which is very involved with photo books. Uh, yeah. When it's self published. For instance, the last photo festival in 2015, we had a very large section of photo books which were displayed there. Uh, the only point I'm trying to make is that in a, at a time when funds, for instance, are a problem, one, two, when there's a new medium which has become available, right? The internet yeah. wasn't available to the extent it was, say, 10, 15 years ago, but it's there. So yeah. is it right for us to say Ki, we will not go down that path simply because it does not path we came from. No, no, you That's have your... to go down the path in any case. There is, is This is an inevitable and it is a, a, a totally democratic medium and it should definitely has to be followed. But, you know, you are just talking about it's like write, handwriting, you know, it's either writing by hand or, or printing or on the computer. Of course, of course, this path has to be taken. This is the path that the, that the younger generation know. I mean, look at the yeah. way people are taking pictures. Pictures were only taken by people who had some privilege earlier because you have to buy a camera and then you have to buy the film. And either you were a rich person or your photography was a person. That's right. Yes, That's was, right. Your father had a that, yeah. You were a rich person. Yeah. Today, this thing, mm -hmm. everybody's taking pictures, which is fine. That's so that's the photography today. But I mean, there are two parallel things. The other one, I'm sure it will come back and there will be... Look, Dayanita was making photo books right in the beginning. Dayanita Singh was the one who actually pushed that photo book concept here in India. I mean, in our heads, I think. Am I right, Dinesh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to a large extent, yes, of course. Yeah, beautiful. There's a beautiful medium, of yeah. course. Books. I'm now writing books and they're being printed. And it's a beautiful medium because it's there forever, you know. It doesn't disappear in three seconds like something on a screen, which is always the fear of those who've grown up with this other medium, you know, that you can't just turn and look at it because once you've seen one and you get the next one on the screen, the first one's gone. And for me, there's no context of that picture if I haven't seen the one before. So, I mean, it's, it's what we get used to. How we no, it's just like, that. for instance, if, we, if I may just, uh, it, you know, share the experience of a photo festival, say DPF particularly. So we had three kinds of ways work. One was the print, the other was the photo book, and the third was the, 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 the slideshow every evening. Yeah. Uh, the, the slideshow had the, you know, the, the momentary uh, engagement which you're talking about, three seconds and then it's gone. Uh, but I won't discount it. It was very popular. A lot of people, a lot more people got to show their work, which if we had only stayed with prints, we would not have been able to represent 25 other photographers' works there. Agreed. Agreed. But so that's the only, the only point I'm trying to is that shown on the screen for uh, during audiovisuals as part of a photo story, a dramatic exactly. photo story. And what kind of look at those audiovisuals? Is this to blow people away? You know, I still think it's the, the grandest thing for photography ever was this 1820 projector. Uh, you know, uh, audiovisuals really. Well, we're lucky to have been in that world, and now I guess the. Next generation is lucky to be in their world and everybody feels comfortable. Absolutely. That, that's, I think, the way it works. Yeah. That's the way it works.
anyway, I think this was. But I think it's the eleventh. The the sheer, you know, the grandeur of a print, especially the forty-two, forty-two prints he's talking about. Uh, oh, it takes my breath away. Um, hi, Radhika. Can I say something? Yeah, yes, of course. Yeah, of course. How nice. Very hi. Nice. Hi, this is Anita. Hi, Sunil. Hi, Dinesh. It's great to see all of you here. Can't see you. Oh, oh hi, Anita. Uh, yeah. The I, video is off. I guess my camera is. Yeah. Ah, uh, so I really enjoyed this conversation about the book and the print and the audio visual. Just want to bring Sunil back, and if he could just, uh, you know, he was talking about his both the books. He showed us one. If he could just show the other one, I was just very curious oh, to yeah. see. That got sort of. Um, That's. Yes, uh, yeah, I was nine, one. So, so you were trying for, to compare uh, both the books. Yeah, you so could do that, very please. different. That's a yeah, photo that book. Thought, yes. This is a this is a single project. And some of this is in the exhibition, as you see it here, exact picture. And then the other one, instead of doing a catalog of the exhibition, we made a scrapbook of my our personal archives. To provide a kind of background, a kind of context for all the work that was done. So all these encounters we've talked about today, they're in this book, and it's just it's a soft cover with colored pages and handwriting, and it's personal snaps, it's letters, it's uh, it's how I started with my basic camera, how I've ended up, you know, nearly having a heart attack with heart monitors, <laughs> and in between, you know, there's a the family and my mom, and then I'm ending with the, the next generation. There's a baby now, uh, and how we got together appeared in the Guardian. It became public. Uh, let me see. So you know, it's just a way of uh, of looking at things. Uh, yes, nice. I love it. It's, it's a, a kind of background. Yeah, it's great to see my parents every Christmas in Canada. You know, that's when I, that was my annual visit, like that, you know, so uh, it all went and towards it and then the, and the shows that yeah. happened, like that. Yeah, it's so totally in contrast to the other one. Paper. Sorry? Have you used a different it's kind a of paper for this book? Yeah, so totally. It's a, it's a very nice paper. It's like, it's a bit like newsprint, but it doesn't yeah. have show through. It's very nice. Uh, quality. It, it doesn't see One through, so the color doesn't come through. Nice, liberal and malleable. So. Yeah, and it's very matte. But it allows me to put things together. So this is a picture from Bombay, from Chopati, and that's a poster of an AIDS exhibition we did in London. You know, so. It's what we used to call scrapbook in ah, my time. scrapbook, exactly. There's a letter from the hospital telling me something is seriously wrong with me. I need to come in. <laughs> <laughs> There's my friend Roshi. I, I curated her exhibition. She's a South South Asian woman here, and that's the first gay marriage I went to in Boston. Uh, here we are. That's Nigar, uh, representing India. Modern India was a big show in Spain, uh, mm -hmm. and Nigar did things like publish guides to sexuality, that kind of thing. Uh, no, this that's Delhi. Like a beautiful book, really. Wow. Uh, that's yeah. Very nice, beautiful. I mean, I love it. That's us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, it was produced by Autograph, the second book. They're the mm -hmm. publishers, and the first one is produced by Stanley Barker, who produced photo books. So I've been lucky I've fallen into this photo book world. Now it's like, you know, it's like a drug. Now we want another one coming next year, and I'm getting further ideas for photo books. Okay, okay so can we close, can we wind up? Ah. Is that okay with everybody? To see, so this? see there will see there be around again, is she? Yes, it's fine, yeah. Yeah, I need to go and okay. get the dinner together. <laughs> yeah, so yes, um, thank you so much. And um, I, I still feel that I missed the major part of the conversation, but um, 
I'm sure uh, everyone here, uh, like, you know, from the way it is going on with the energy and like, you know, the flow, it feels uh, a great one. So thank you so much. Um, thank you so uh, thank you for everyone for joining and for making this an interesting. Well, thank session. you for having you this much. happen. And I can assure you that if you get this whole lot of people together, they will always be happy to join and because and this energy will continue because that's where it's coming from, from the back. Piche se aad. Sure. Thank you. Don't say that you are coming back. I'm going to back to the corner. You're not the only one who's going to be back to the corner. Okay. Oh, now... <laughs> Yeah, it's been great coming and seeing everyone again. It's uh, I, I miss being in Delhi. As you know, I'm you know, I'm a, still a Delhi wala, so uh, there you no, go. Come anytime you like, and you're welcome to stay for as long as you want. You know that now. Okay. Let's restart. Let's yeah, see. let's get together. Must let's see you it. next time, Dinesh. We should get together. Yeah. Okay. okay. Love to. Bye. Bye, Rahul. Sunil, I want. To... If you can Thank send you. me, if I want to get a copy of that. Please, uh, please let me know how yeah. I can get it. Sure, I'll send you some uh, notes. Yeah, please, that'll be great. Okay. And wonderful seeing you again. And Radhika, you and I live in, well, I don't live in Delhi, but yeah, I live in the satellite town. So please, let's get living soon. Yeah. Okay. As soon as they Bye, everybody. Bye, Sushil. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.